1 through 9. 1 Kings 19, chapter 1 through, verses 1 through 9. And there you will find these words. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not take your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Bathsheba in Judah, he left his servant there. While he himself went a day's journey into the desert, he came to a broom tree, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around, there by his head was a cake of bread over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank, then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up, ate and drank, strengthened by that food. He traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. I want to highlight once again that verse from verse 3. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Bashid and Judah, he left his servant there. And as we move down to verse 4, while he himself went a day's journey into the desert, he came to a broom tree, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I want to pose a question to you tonight. What happens when you've had enough? What happens when you've had enough? Sometimes in life we're going to hit a time when we can only simply say, Lord, I've had it. I've had enough. I'm tired. I don't want to deal with this stuff anymore. We are going to have those trials and tribulations and it's going to seem like they will just not end. People have taken us out to the breaking point, whether it be on your job, whether it be on your family, your school. And I even dare you to say some of the people that might be closest to you will sometimes take you to that point where all you can say is, I'm done. In the streets, we would say, or as my mom would say, I'm tired of these ninjas, or the N-word, as we can't use it anymore. And sometimes we're going to have our share of ninjas that we just can't deal with. And I, I hate to say it, you know, sometimes, and you know, every, every once in a while, every once in a blue moon, just not all the time. But every once in a blue moon, it might just be that person sitting next to you in the pew or the person that's on that committee with you, or on that board with you, that just, that just knows what that last nerve is. And as soon as they know what it is, they just, they just tap it like that where you've just said, I've had enough. I can't deal with it anymore. And as I see Deacon Stanley in the back, I know you're serving on our search committee. And Lord only knows, I pray for you because at some point, you're going to say, Lord, I've had enough. What can we do now? But we're going to hit these seasons of life when we're going to have the good and we're going to have the bad. But through it all, we know that we have the assurance that God will see us through. And during these seasons of emotions, we're going to experience many different things. We're going, to, we're going to have victories, sadness, joy, pain, and sorrow. But at the end of the day, through all of that pain, God will bring that joy in the morning. Because we know we are blessed. We know we have favor with God. And it doesn't take a lot to give us stress. Because I don't know who thought of that term that I'm too blessed to be stressed. Because, yes, I am blessed. Yes, I, I am, I'm favored by God. We all have that favor by God. But guess what? 
we still have stress in our life. But many of these things today can be in the midst of a season that God just has planned for you. And it is during that season, it's not meant to cause you any harm, but it is to make sure that you are drawing closer and closer and closer to him. Many have been incarcerated. Many have even gotten to the point where they even feel like prayer isn't working. We've gotten to the point where we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And we've had to say, Lord, I'm tired of this season. I'm tired of praying. I'm sick of singing. I simply want it to end. But guess what? It is at that point where you have to remember that God has your back. But as I look at this text, I see a few things that kind of emerge. The first thing is that we look at the message that Elijah got. We look at this young man, Elijah, who was in a great season. He had just come off doing some great things, and now he's gotten this message. As, we, as you look in the previous chapter, he just laid the smack down on 450 other prophets, killed them all, wiped them out. And for some reason, Jezebel didn't quite like that. She kind of had a problem with, with him using God to take down all of her prophets, all of her soothsayers. And after all of that, what happened? She told her husband, said, um, I don't like what he did. So I want you to make sure that his life ends just like that. And sometimes, have you ever been in a situation where you get the wrong message and all of a sudden your world just changed? Elijah got the wrong message and went from being glorified to being stressed and depressed. And sometimes you got to stop listening to the wrong messages and the wrong messengers. And remember that people don't know anything about your personal situation. So you have to remember to stop listening to what you've heard and remember what you have experienced in the presence of God. I remember on several occasions I received the wrong message. And it is those times I had to take that step back and say, wait a minute. If God has this before me, let no one, no man, no situation will come against what God has in store. And if you just realize that God is going to make that path straight for everything that you need to do. Because there are people in this world that will find every reason in the book to stop you from fulfilling God's potential for your life. They will try to do everything to try to stop you from potential from fulfilling God's commands and God's actions for your life. Things are going great, and then all of a sudden, Mr. and Mrs. Negativity comes in play with the old same song. It doesn't matter what people think. All you have to do is remember what God has in store for you. And sometimes we're even going to hit that wall. We're just going to get to that point where you, you've just prayed, you've done everything that you possibly can, and then all of a sudden it just seems like your prayers are falling on deaf ears. But I'm here to tell you, such is not the case. Because if we look at that term depression, I have the pleasure of working with some great young people on my job. They're in the high schools out in Norristown and Pottstown, and some of them are fantastic. Some of them are dirt poor. Some of them were homeless and now are in school. Some of them are in foster care, but they're still keeping their heads up. And I've even had a few young people say, Mr. Coleman, I am just depressed. There is just, I, I, I don't want to go home because my family's in disarray. I just can't deal with it. And they, that sometimes they hear so much negativity that that depression sets in. And here, Elijah heard that wrong message, and that depression sets in. And boy, let me tell you, that depression is nothing to mess with. Because that depression will cause you to go into what we call contemplation. That's where you start to think about. Elijah heard that wrong message, message and had a moment of crazy contemplation, where he just said, I'm ready to end it. He had to think about what he heard, and that caused him to react. Then he goes into evacuation. You see what Elijah did in verse 3, he ran for his life. 
And why is it every time we hear the wrong information or get stressed, we want to run away from God? We want to still go to work. We want to still pay the bills. But when things get really tough, sometimes we just want to escape even from God himself and from all the positive things around us. And we want to go in hiding. And once that happens, that's when that isolation sets in. And in that isolation, that's where Satan knows he got you. Right there when you're sitting all alone, when you think you just can't take it anymore, Satan says, yeah, I got you now. I know what I'm going to do. But guess what? God has a way of just giving you that extra boost of energy to get you going. So after all of this depressing talk, I'm here to tell you that God has something in store for all of us. It doesn't matter what people have said. It doesn't matter how people have wronged you. It doesn't matter how people have treated you. Just when you think God hasn't shown up, that's when God is about to show out. All at once, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was a cake of bread over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate, drank, and laid down again. Then the angel came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Now let's look at these meals like this. That first meal was restoration. God had to restore his faith in his power. That second meal was preparation. God was preparing him to do something great. I'm here to tell you this morning, God is not through with any of us by a long shot. God will answer your prayer. God will meet your needs. God will be your strength in the time of storm. God will make a way out of no way. When people tell you that you can't, remember that God says you can. Seasons don't last forever. Yes, it might be tough right now, but just when you think God won't show up, God will show out. He will show you his best. He will give you his all. He'll see you through. God is, God is our power, our might, and our strength. God will protect you in all situations because our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest fray, but holy lean, holy lean, not partly, but Holy lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Always remember that no matter what you're going through, whether it's personal, whether it's in church, whether it's on your job, whether it's with your neighbors, whether it's with your family, whether it's in your community, it doesn't matter because God has your back in everything. All you have to do is say, Lord, I need your strength. I need your power right now. And I promise you with all power and might in his hands, all you have to do is reach out to him and he will wrap his loving arms around you and say, my child, my child, you are a son or daughter of mine. I will let no harm come before you. No matter what people may say, God has your back. Amen. Amen. There might be somebody here that doesn't know Christ and wants to take that step further. You might be sitting there saying, you know what, I've, that's me. I'm just dealing with all kind of stuff. I I, I just can't take it anymore. I'm I'm tired of dealing with with folks and I, I, I need something more. And I'm here to tell you that God is that something more. All you have to do is take one step towards him, and he will run towards you. It doesn't matter what your past says. It doesn't matter what people may say. But it's your life we're talking about. It's your life, your soul that we're talking about. If there's one here today, I invite you to come forward. Let us all stand as we hear the song. If the doors of the church are open, won't you come? Won't you come? Is there one tonight? Is there one? Live on nothing less.
than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, the holy name, for Jesus' name, for Christ. And it was tonight. just so thankful to be here tonight and you know uh this is my first saturday service and so i had to <laughs> y'all didn't see it i had my little timer to make sure that that we because <laughs> i could have kept on and i looked and i said okay i wanted to make sure i'm respectful of everybody's time so with that all minds and hearts clear let us stand as we have our benediction and depart Father God, we want to thank you, O Lord, for what we've experienced tonight. We know, O Lord, that you are our all in all, and Lord, we know that you are going to be with us no matter where we go. You, we know that you will not put anything before us that we could not handle. So when those storms come, when those mountains seem hard to climb, O Lord, we know it is you right there with a rope that's going to pull us up. And we want to thank you, O Lord, for everything that we've experienced, because through all those trials, we've come out stronger and stronger and stronger. And we ask for your protecting guidance and love and protection to be with us. And now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, rest, rule, and abide in each of us. Let all the saints of God say amen, amen, amen. God bless you. You have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.